You finally did it, you maniacs. You blew it up. God damn you all to hell. Look, it's the plot of many a science fiction story, but this is actually possible. Now, we're not suggesting that the planet would be overrun with sentient talking apes in the absence of humans, but could we actually wipe out all human life on Earth? If that's possible, could we go a step further and eliminate not only human life, but all life down to the last microbe? And if we could do both of those, well, why stop there with either current or near future technology? Is there anything oh, we could possibly do to completely shatter the planet into pieces? So let's go. Go! First, let's examine the possibility of destroying all humans. Thanks to nuclear weapons, this seems like something that we nailed decades ago, but to wipe out 100% of humanity is actually a lot trickier than it at first seems. Let's take a best slash weirdest case scenario for nuclear annihilation. Even if all of the world's nuclear powers decided to simultaneously launch every nuclear missile they had in a coordinated effort to wipe out humanity, it wouldn't kill everyone. They could choose their targets for maximum efficiency, but there aren't actually enough nuclear weapons to kill off the human race. There are roughly 12,500 nuclear warheads in the world and over 10,000 cities. At first, that sounds pretty good. You've got one missile for every city in the world, with a couple of thousand being left over. The problem is that number only counts urban areas, and there would be about 4 million other towns and villages that wouldn't be struck. Even if the majority of humans were killed in the initial strike, there's simply not enough missiles to take out all of the cities and still have enough left over to hit every random farmstead in Iowa and Nebraska. Of course, there would still be nuclear winter resulting in nuclear famine, and that would be pretty unpleasant for everybody, but it's not a guaranteed death sentence. Humans survived the last ice age, so there's no reason to believe that we wouldn't survive the next one as well. Sure, there would be absolutely billions of deaths, but there would also be millions of survivors. And that's simply not good enough for today's video. So the next most common suggestion is some sort of biological weapon. A man-made designer virus with the intent of being as contagious as it is lethal. Logistically speaking, spreading such a disease isn't the easiest thing to do. Even if aerosolized weapons were created containing the virus, people could still isolate themselves to survive. Once again, urban areas would be absolutely absolutely devastated, but rural homes are going to be less likely to be affected. Since the damn farmers seem to be providing a giant roadblock in our goal of human extinction, let's consider a true supervillain level scenario. Instead of having our virus be airborne, let's create a water transmitted pathogen instead. Then all you need to do is contaminate every source of water in the world, every lake, every reservoir, every ocean. Do you live in a community where people tend to dig their own wells rather than rely on water provided by the governments? Well, we're into something there's virus in your wells too. Unfortunately, there's still is not going to kill everybody. Again, you'll be looking at billions of deaths, but every virus has some percentage of humans that are just innately immune to it. This percentage is generally in the range of 1 to 10%, but that's still 80 to 800 million survivors. Now, we could potentially combine these two plans by simultaneously nuking the planet to hell and unleashing a deadly virus into the water supply, but it's still not a perfect plan. Enacting multiple plans, each with a non zero survival rate, will continue to thin the population, but it will not cause complete extinction. And also, many plans for eradicating humans become less effective the less dense the population is, so these plans are all likely to face diminishing returns as well. Unless someone could develop a form of mass mind control and make every human on the planet kill themselves, actually making the human race go extinct is a task that we might not be able to handle. So instead of focusing just on humans, what if we went bigger? Is there anything we could do to the Earth to make it completely uninhabitable? So, weirdly enough, killing everything is actually quite a bit easier than just trying to kill all humans. At the very least, it's theoretically easier, though all of these plans rely on technology that's just a little bit in the future. Now, one option we've actually touched on already on this channel is Grey Goo, self-replicating nanobots that could consume all carbon on the planet with shocking speed. These tiny robots would deconstruct matter at the molecular level to build additional copies of themselves that would repeat the process, experiencing exponential growth. All life on our planet requires carbon, so even where people are spread out, the goo would spread easily by consuming other plants and animal life. This wouldn't necessarily kill all life on the planet, but there's a good chance that the only survivors would be microbes at the bottom of the sea, and because grey goo would be able to spread across bodies of water on its own thanks to the carbon contained in the water and marine life, it would even reach the research stations in the Antarctic. It's easy to forget, but at any given time there are between 1,000 and 5,000 people living in Antarctica. That's more than enough people to ensure the necessary genetic diversity to repopulate the planet, and their extreme isolation would leave them protected from many other human-centric extinction plants. 
plans. Another possibility for eliminating all life on Earth is to use the same technology being researched for terraforming Mars. Having an atmosphere is key to our survival, and were it to suddenly vanish, so too would most life on the planet. Once again, there would likely be survivors deep in the oceans for at least a while, but with the atmosphere completely gone, their days would absolutely be numbered. Our atmosphere is held in place by Earth's gravity, at least mostly. It's very slowly leaking out, but we're not looking to slowly kill everybody. Oh, we can't alter gravity, but there are other factors keeping our atmosphere in place as well. Most notably, there's the magnetosphere. This magnetic field shields our atmosphere from solar winds that could blow it off into space, and it protects the surface of the planet from most of the harmful solar radiation. So what if we just got rid of that? There are numerous proposals for how to create a magnetosphere around Mars, and those same methods could be applied here on Earth as well. When two magnetic fields with identical properties but opposite orientations meet, they can cancel each other out to a degree. Creating something that would perfectly cancel out the magnetosphere is likely impossible because the field is too complex, but that's probably okay. It may not be instantaneous, but if we could significantly weaken or alter the magnetosphere, it could allow solar winds to begin stripping the Earth's atmosphere. The increase in solar radiation would also have the potential to eliminate most forms of life, and what remains of the magnetic field could also have completely unpredictable effects that may wind up killing us in a way that we haven't even imagined yet. But if we're willing to play the long game like that, there's an even less practical but more reliable way to eliminate all life on the planet. Now, when we search outer space for habitable planets, uh, we're looking for planets in a star's Goldilocks zone, the area both near and far enough away from a star that liquid water can exist without all boiling away or freezing over. Being inside a star's Goldilocks zone is considered essential for all life on our planet, so moving the Earth out of that zone seems like a reasonable way to destroy every living thing. Again, we mean theoretically reasonably, as the planet is actually pretty ridiculous. Moving a planet is no simple task, but if a larger asteroid passes close enough to Earth, it can actually alter the planet's orbit around the Sun. Asteroids pretty much never come close enough, and if they do, they're much too small or far away to have any meaningful impact. Under normal circumstances, the best you'd get is an imperceptible wobble that quickly straightens out. However, if we could tow some really large asteroids close enough to Earth, their attraction towards one another would be enough to meaningfully change our orbit and pull us out of the Goldilocks zone. There are just a few obvious hurdles with this plan. The first is that we would need to get a nearby asteroid and have it towed towards Earth somehow. Since the largest asteroid in our solar system is at least an order of magnitude too small for this task, this plan would require bringing multiple large asteroids close enough to our planet to add adequately alter the orbit. The logistics and resources for this would be, well, Herculean to say the absolute least. Then again, if the end goal is for some reason to kill the entire planet, we probably don't need to be worried about conserving our resources, do we? <laughs> Finally, we could end all life on Earth by hitting it with a massive amount of energy. In 2017, researchers decided to calculate how much energy it would take to kill everything. They obviously weren't trying to create an actionable plan, they were just curious supervillains. After all, if a really big asteroid 65 million years ago was able to wipe out 75% of species on Earth, just how big of an asteroid would it take to wipe out 100%? They theorized that if you could vaporize all of the water, on the planet, it would be devastating enough to kill even the sturdiest extremophiles like the tardigrade. Their research was assuming a collision with a massive asteroid, but if you want to give this whole thing an extra sci-fi flair, you can just assume that we're using some sort of Death Star laser to get the same results. According to their calculations, the amount of energy that would need to strike the Earth to boil off all of the water is 6 times 10 to the power of 26 joules. Since that number is almost certainly meaningless to you, that is roughly 1 million times the total annual energy consumption of the entire planet. It's not a realistic goal for the foreseeable future, but if we ever had a way to generate that amount of energy, there's no reason to think that such a plan wouldn't be possible. But if we're already dealing with ludicrous amounts of energy, it's time to go big or go home. And since our goal is to make sure there's no home left for anybody, that means we're going to go very, very big. All right, so what's it going to take to shatter the planet into millions of tiny pieces that fly off into space? To accomplish this, we need to hit the planet with its gravitational binding energy. This is the amount of energy that it would take to send every atom of the planet flying away at escape velocity. Anything less than the planet might break into pieces, but those pieces will be pulled back together by gravity to create some sort of weird Earth 2.0. The gravitational binding energy of the Earth is 2.49 times 10 to the power of 32 joules. That's a million times more energy than it would take to hypothetically destroy all life, which was already 
31 million times more than the annual energy consumption of all humans combined in an entire year. So, well, how the hell are we going to create that amount of energy? And the answer is to create a relativistic kinetic kill vehicle, a large mass flying at speeds close to the speed of light. This would impart a huge amount of kinetic energy onto anything it hit. So, how big and how fast do we need to go in order to annihilate this godforsaken planet once and for all? As you approach speeds like 99.999999% the speed of light, the required mass obviously decreases. Of course, getting to those speeds is going to be a challenge for quite a long time, so let's just go for something a lot slower, like, you know, just 99.5% of the speed of light. That's still extraordinarily fast, well beyond human capabilities at this time, but adding each of those extra nines onto the end is going to be unimaginably difficult. Going at such a speed, you would need to hit Earth with a mass of 400 billion metric tons, which is not nearly as big as it actually sounds. As a frame of reference, the Great Pyramid has a mass of 3.9 million metric tons, so it's just 68,000 times as big as that. <laughs> so pretty small. But if we multiply that 68,000 times volume of the pyramid, we get about 175 cubic kilometers. That's a much better frame of reference. That's basically just two Mount Everests. How reasonable! That would be an above-sized asteroid, to be sure, but it wouldn't even be close to the largest asteroid in our solar system. Getting to the asteroid belt and accelerating an asteroid directly toward Earth at such a speed is a daunting proposition, but it's not necessarily something that will be impossible with future technology. Fortunately for us, it will be very, very distant future technology. So look, life is obviously resilient, and the goal of eradicating all life on the planet, or even just all human life, is surprisingly difficult. Of all the potential ways that we discuss to make our species go extinct, grey goo might actually be the most realistic. Nanobots are currently still in the R&D phase, but they are technology that will almost certainly be realized within our lifetime. Self-replicating nanobots, on the other hand, are a different story. From a practicality standpoint, there's not really any point to creating them. It would be far more efficient to have a nanobot factory, and for the nanobots to just perform their intended task, and we aren't even sure if it would be possible for them to self-replicate. But if your goal was to be a cartoon supervillain, that is probably going to be your best bet. The main takeaway from all of this is that as long as life exists on Earth, there's probably going to be human life. NASA's DART mission proved that we can change the path of an asteroid, and it isn't even that difficult, so we don't have to be worried about an extinction event like the one that killed off all the dinosaurs, except birds. No matter what sort of disaster we try to engineer for ourselves, life finds a way. It seems like we're going to be stuck with one another for a very, very, very long time. That or maybe we could just genetically engineer some sort of bulletproof apex predator that hunts humans both for food and sport, and then they'd hunt us to extinction. That sounds fun. 